Okay, another bright, sunshiny day behind me. So I got my cardboard covering the window up. Sorry for the way it looks. <coughs> Excuse me, the cold's still kicking. Don't worry about it. Jesus has got my back. Let's pray. I love you, Jesus, so much, and I thank you for your love. I thank you for your mercy, for your goodness, for your kindness, for your many blessings in my life, the life of my family. I pray that you would just help this message to get through to those that you wanted to get through to, that they would open their ears and open their hearts and see the truth and get away from, this, from their wicked, sinful lifestyles. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. Okay, this video is on fornication and adultery. Two of the biggest problems in the church today. And you know, the pastors just call you. The pastors say, well, you know, uh, Jesus it just loves you like you are. Yeah, God loves you just the way that you are. And uh, there's no problem uh, when you're out sleeping around with your neighbor's wife and having premarital sex. It's all fine. Baloney. Baloney. God says, no, no, no. If you're out sleeping with your neighbor's wife, if you're out sleeping around on your wife or your husband, you're out committing premarital sex, God says plainly in his word that you will not, you will not step foot into heaven. You won't be raptured. It's not Paul Kidd telling you. It's the Holy Bible telling you. You condemn yourself. It's not me condemning you. You condemn yourself by living that way. I'm tired of seeing people coddled and seeing people just act like it's, it's so cool. All, all the media, uh, the Hollywood movies, endorse this and portray it all the time. Television, your favorite television shows, portray this garbage all the time. I don't watch television anymore. Praise the Lord, he's delivered me from it two years ago. I'm not going back. I can't stand television. It, it, it's, a, it's a bunch of garbage. There might be a few things on there that are decent, but it's so bad, I'm not putting myself in danger to have demons come in, into my life from watching any of it. That's what they portray. Go out and sleep around on your wife or your husband. It don't matter. They, they, people say now it's good for your marriage. Baloney. We're made to be one man and one woman. Period. That's it. When you're married in holy matrimony to be only with that person faithful to them till death do you part. That's what it's taught. That's the, way, that's the way that it is. And I don't care how, how much society wants to change it. It wants to pervert it. It wants to say that it's okay. It's not okay. All these kids that are running around, sleeping around with their friends in, in, in uh, middle school and high school, even elementary school now. And all the, the young adults sleeping around with their boyfriends and girlfriends and their fiancés. They got a little 411 for you. A fiancé is not a husband or wife. You don't sleep with anybody. 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 If you're a man, you don't sleep with a woman. If you're a woman, you don't sleep with a man. That's the only way that it is. A man with a woman or a woman with a man. You don't do it unless it's in the marriage bed. After you've been married on your honeymoon, then you're cool. But until then, no, you don't do it. I'm just tired of it. I'm sick of everybody just wanting to say, oh, but it's okay. No, it's not okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. I'm telling you it's not okay. I don't care what the so-called pastors tell you. They're a bunch of liars. They're watered down, filthy, satanic clowns. They work for the devil. They don't work for Jesus. I'm not saying all pastors work for the devil, but most of them do nowadays. Most teachers, watchmen, leaders, they work for the devil. Most so-called Christians work for the devil. They don't understand they do what they do because you know what the Bible says? God says we can serve one master, either God or Satan. So when you're backslidden, you're doing things that are evil and against God's word, guess what? You are working for the devil. You can't work for God then. And I don't care how many people say that once saved, always saved is true. I don't care how many liars there are out there like Ron Graham and Jack Kelly and the millions of others that tell you that Jesus died for every sin you'll ever commit on the cross. He did not. He died for all sins, past and present only. When you repent of your sins, you confess your sins and repent and get saved by Jesus' precious blood, every sin you've ever done in the past up to that moment are wiped clean. Yes, they are. But the Bible says at least 250 times, repent, 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 repent. If Jesus says something in the Bible more than once, even two times, you better be looking very, very seriously, my friends, at what he's saying. If he says it 250 times or more, you better understand this is vital, vital, vital for your eternity. 
So he didn't say that to just to hear himself talk. He demands, he demands we repent of our sins after we're saved. If not, we're not going to step foot into heaven. And guess what? For those few moments of pleasure that you have when you're committing adultery, when you're committing fornication, if the rapture happens in the twinkling of an eye, you're left behind, my friends. You're left behind to suffer the anger and the pain and the anguish, knowing you threw everything away for a few moments of illicit pleasure. It's just That's just so sad. I can't think of hardly anything sadder in life. But it's a fact. It's the truth. I don't care how many liars tell you you'll get raptured regardless of what you do because you've already been saved and those sins are forgiven. No. Those who say that call Jesus Christ a liar. They call Jehovah God a liar. And they call the Holy Bible a book of lies. And woe, woe, woe unto them. I know the church is apostate. I know it's growing apostate. I know I know the backsliders call other people backsliders. The apostate call other Christians apostate. I understand this. I get it. It's only going to get worse. The Bible said it's going to be this way in the last of the last days before Christ's return. We're in those days right now, my friends. No one knows the day and the hour of the rapture but God. If anyone tells you otherwise, they're a liar. Run from them. But God told us he'll give us a sermon to know the season. I know we're in a season. I believe we're in the last moments, the last seconds on God's time clock of the seasons, the season of his, of his return. We're right there. You can see it everywhere. If you can't see it, you're blind, spiritually blind, spiritually ignorant, biblically ignorant. So you're talking about all this stuff, and and, 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 and then they say, well, you, well, you know, uh, you know, if, if I just have a... Uh, oral sex with my uh, with my girlfriend or boyfriend or fiance that that's not real sex yes it is sex is sex any contact between males and females with the male and female genitalia that's sex it's premarital sex it's fornication it's adultery if you look at a woman or a man lusting after them you've already committed adultery in your heart the Bible says I'll be covering that in a little while so even that is adultery and fornication Understand, God's not playing games. Jesus is not playing games. That's why he made it He made it possible for a man and a woman to be married. That's why he said that if you don't get married, that's cool too. Because some people are, are called to be married and some aren't. But if you're not married, you're never going to get married. He can give you the strength and to be able to resist. God doesn't give you anything. He'll never tempt you beyond what you can resist. And he will always give you a way of escape. That's scripture, my friends. It's plain and simple. It's just the way that it is. So what's it going to be? Are you going to keep living in a filthy, sinful, adulterous life? Listening to all your pastors who are just goats, who are just wolves, who are leading the flock to hell because they don't have the guts or the backbone to call out the people in their congregation who are committing adultery and fornicating, even though they see it right before their very eyes? You listen to those liars who are dragging you to hell with them? Or listen to what a Bible-thumping, Jesus-freak, holy roller, Paul Kidd tells you that it's verifiable in the King James Version Bible. It's not my words. It's God's words. I will always tell you the words strictly from the King James Version Bible, but I always want you to look for yourselves to make sure. Trust no man. Trust the word of God only. Man is not to be trusted. None of us. Me or nobody else. If what we say is from the Bible, praise the Lord. Then trust what we say, but verify it always. Not worth it, my friends. It's not worth missing the rapture and being left behind. Because understand, when you miss the rapture, all hell is going to break loose. Planes are going to crash. Cars are going to crash. Buses, trains, boats, where the drivers or Christians are taken away. And you, you can be a passenger or crossing a street and get killed. There's going to be all kinds of crazy violence and rape and murder and pillaging and martial law and gangs roaming the street. People are going to be dying left and right. And guess what? You were left behind. So you're not right with Jesus Christ. You're not ready for heaven. So if you die then, you wake up in hell. Your next breath you take is in hell. So it's not time to play games. It's not worth it to be left behind for seven years of hell on earth. That makes today's evil world look like Disneyland. It's not worth it. You need to understand. Get right with Jesus Christ right now. If you're not saved, get saved by Jesus' blood. If you are a backslidden Christian, repent, 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 repent. 
like the Bible says over and over and over again. Stop playing games, my friends, because most of you who are watching this right now, if you're backslidden or unsaved, you'll take that mark of the beast because it's human nature to, if you can live an extra day or two, you'll do anything possible to live. It's, it, it's human instinct, and Satan knows that. That's why he wants to leave you kept behind, left behind for that garbage. I know there'll be a huge number of tribulation saints that are saved, but it'll be a tiny, minuscule part of the population. Stop playing games, my friends, and start getting right now before you run out of time. It's not game time. It's time to go back to the old days of hell, fire, and brimstone, where the holy roller, Jesus freak, Bible thumper preachers were out there. When you went into the service, you fell on your knees because you knew you sinned. You knew you were fornicating with your eyes or your body. You're committing adultery with your eyes or your body. And you had to fall on your knees. You had to go to the altar and repent. If you didn't, you knew you were going to hell. I'm bringing that back. I'm preaching that way. Those who want to hear it, praise the Lord, they'll come to my channel. Either my two YouTube channels or my multiple Facebook book channels. And they'll hear the word of God and they'll share it with their friends. And they'll get it out. I'm not begging anybody to do anything. I understand. Over the past couple days, I've only got a small core group of true Christian friends that follow. They don't follow Paul Kidd. They follow what Paul Kidd believes, which is Jesus Christ. They follow the King James Version Bible, so they're with me. They're, they're slaves with me for Christ. Like the original Greek transcript said, the Apostle Paul is a slave, not a servant, a slave. I have a few that are slaves with me for Jesus Christ. And they'll follow Jesus Christ with me. And they'll stand with me. The rest... They either will or they won't. I can't do anything about it. All I can do is tell you the word from the Holy Bible and tell you to fall on your knees and repent. Repent, 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 repent. If you're living in fornication, in adultery, with your body or your eyes, repent of any sin you're doing. Today we're focusing on those two sins, but any sin you've got harboring in your heart, any sin that's taking you away from the, from the God where the Holy Spirit has left your heart because He's our conscience. He will leave. If we're not living right for Jesus Christ, if we're filled with filth and sin and iniquity, he will leave. And iniquity is a sin pattern where sin builds up and builds up and builds up. He's our conscience. That's why you don't care about sin anymore. That's why you go on fornicating and committing adultery. Because you don't care about sin anymore. You believe the lies of once saved, always saved. You believe the liars that preach that garbage. The satanic-led clowns who think they're Christians and pastors. And, and, and bishops and evangelists. They're liars. They're heading to the pits of hell and, taking you, and dragging you down with them because you're letting them. Don't do it, my friends. If you do it, shame on you. It's your own fault because you've been warned over and 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 over again. And you'll keep getting warned by people like me and a few others that preach the truth until the rapture happens. And when I'm out of your hair, you don't have to worry about listening to the Bible thumping, Jesus freak, holy roller, Paul kid anymore or any of my friends, or any of the other ones out there that I don't know, that are brothers and sisters in Christ that preach the same way. Let's read some scripture. Got to get into the scripture. Praise the Lord. I need a drink of tea again. Excuse me. Got a lot of scripture. I'm going to start breaking out more and more in my videos. All scripture, by the way, that I always teach is, is KJV. I bringeth the KJV to thee. Matthew 5, 27, 29. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, or a woman that looks on a man, it's the same thing, hath already committed adultery with her already in his heart, or her heart. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out, and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee, that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. He's, he's not talking about cut your hand off or pluck your eye out. He's talking about if you're walking around fornicating and committing adultery with your eyes or with your body, get rid of it, man. It's better. It's better to have that filth out of your life and not be doing that and go to heaven than to go to hell by doing that garbage. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 6, 9-10. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, 
nor extortioner shall inherit the kingdom of God. He didn't say the unsaved. He said none. That includes Christians, backslidden Christians. Repent now and get it right. 1 Corinthians 6.15 Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. Don't be going going around out whoring around with 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 uh, with women and men and, and, and prostitutes and, 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 and with your eyes and your body. Don't do it because your body is a temple of God. First Corinthians six, eighteen to nineteen. Flee fornication, every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? So why are you going to be treating the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, like that? He lives in your body if you're a Christian. If you're backslidden and you're, and you're gone, he's gone, but you still know your body is a temple of Christ, and you can't be joining the temple of Christ with filth like that, fornication and adultery. Galatians 5, 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Praise the Lord. Again, God will never judge you beyond anything you can't that, that you can't walk away from and be delivered from. He won't judge you any way that he knows you can't handle. He'll always give you a way to escape. You won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you walk in the Spirit, have your body filled from head to toe, sanctify it the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. When you love the things of this world, not just adultery and fornication, when you love the things of this world, God says you're an enemy of him, an enemy. You think the enemy of God is going to step foot into heaven? He's talking to Christians and non-Christians alike. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is meat and potatoes, my friends. It's surf and turf with a side dish of key lime pie, the real meat from the Word of God. So the time is now. What's it going to be? It's an A or B choice. Simple as it can be. A. Be saved by Jesus Christ's blood. Repent, 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 repent of all sins you commit after you're saved. To live the way the Bible says, cover to cover, live holy. Keep your garment spotless by repenting. Enter into heaven forever. Be raptured soon. Praise the Lord. Or be backslidden and refuse to repent or not get saved at all and live forever in hell. Let's pray. I love you, Jesus, and I thank you for a chance to get the word out. I thank you for the fire, the fire in my belly from the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. The fire coming down from heaven. The Holy Spirit telling me, preach it, Paul. Get the word out there. That's what it's all about. Just help people to listen and to heed and to understand what's going on, and to wake up, to wake up from the funk they're in. Those who refuse to repent of their sins, the backsliders, make their lives a living hell. Those of us who are Christians who won't witness the loss and pray for them daily, make our life a living hell. Talk on the heartstrings of those who don't know you as Lord and Savior, Jesus. I pray they come to you before it's too late. I ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. If you watch this video and don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day, went back to heaven to be at the right-hand side of the Father. Since that time, you're making a place in heaven for all Christians forever. Please forgive me my sins. Wash my heart white as snow. Come live in my heart. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. When you pray this prayer, Jesus says that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. And when you get saved... Get your King James Version Bible. It's the living, breathing Word of God. Will you feed your body with food and water every day? This Bible will feed your spirit and soul every day if you read it. Pray to Jesus daily. He's your new best friend. He loves you. He wants to talk to you every day. Get water baptized, immersion baptized, dunked under water in a Christian church as soon as possible. Sprinkle baptized doesn't count, my friends. Pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit from head to toe, sanctified by praying, by reading God's Word, by living for Him. Take that King James Version Bible to church. When the pastor preaches, when I do, when anyone does, compare what we say to the Bible. If it don't match, you close that Bible, you walk out immediately, you unfriend, you unsubscribe, you run away as fast as you can. Because anyone who lied to you in Jesus' name, anyone who lied to you about what the Holy Bible says, the Word of God, God's own words, will drag you to hell. If you have questions, comments, concerns, you want me to pray for anything, from a terminal illness to a sick pet, anything in between, contact me. 
I have the gift of faith, mustard seed faith. I didn't earn it or deserve it. Praise the Lord. When I prayed for it, He gave it to me. And I'll pray for you every day, expecting a miracle in your life. I know that God will perform that miracle if it's within His holy will. And if He does, it'll be all through His praise, honor, glory, power, might, majesty, strength, love, compassion, mercy, kindness, tenderness, gentleness, understanding, long suffering. Nothing to do with me. I'm the least in God's kingdom, a tiny fish in a huge ocean, a slave for Jesus Christ. Please share the link to this channel, this video, with friends, neighbors, co workers, loved ones, strangers. Drop it in a blog, plant the seed, and walk away. Let God water it so it can grow. The cotton candy, powder puff, syrupy fluff garbage you hear in churches across the internet everywhere is the word that leads to hell. The word that leads to heaven that points you to the cross of Christ where the Holy Spirit can gently kneel you and Jesus Christ's precious blood can wash away your sins and make you whole is the King James Version Bible. Verse, chapter, book, cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation, where I preach it on this channel. Not because I'm anything, as God's everything. I love you guys. I pray for you every day. May God bless you. It's time to wake up, my friends. Time is short. Amen.